I did read something uh, just very briefly this morning before I came into the office, and it said that there might be a couple of high points in this budget deal, and that is that the IRS and some of your other government agencies will agree to no longer harass people because of their political views. In other words, if you ever attended a Tea Party meeting, the IRS can't hold that against you, which they've been criminally doing now for several years. Question is, how do you enforce that because these agencies work in secret? Well, I guess you have to go out and hire a new group of jackbooted thugs to police the first group of jackbooted thugs. It's 24, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com 24. It's going to warm up a little bit today. I do want to point out the weather brought to you by uh, Mountain Home Auto Ranch. Mentioned in going by there the other day, and women don't do this, but if you're a guy, and you're driving by a large automobile dealership, especially with all the choices they have, a number of different makes and models, you, you almost can feel yourself salivating as you're going down the road. But I just I point that out because we're looking at some weather the next few days. It'll be, call it seasonal, not too terribly cold, even some rain on Saturday. It does look as if the drought that was expected to go into next summer, spring and summer, pretty much a thing of the past now in this part of the world. It appears that we've not only uh, topped everything off, but then some over the last six or eight weeks, just because of the El Nino, apparently, that's been fired up out in the Pacific Ocean. Talking about the members of the House and Senate trying to pass this bill and hoodwink the American people so they can then rush out of town and go home and celebrate the Christmas holiday with their families. They probably call it Christmas at home. I'm sure many of them, when they're actually at work in Washington, call it the winter solstice, especially the Democrats. If you are among those people who don't have a congressional, how shall we put it, lifestyle, and you have to rely on your own wits to survive and put food on the table, that is, you like to bring in some wild game, and sometimes you raise something of your own on the farm or the ranch, then you might want to think, it's getting pretty close to Christmas now, here we are just a little over a week away, giving a call to High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, where one animal is processed at a time, and what you bring in is exactly what you're going to get back. Darren Van Horn, the owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, Idaho. He's got over 30 years' experience in the business. You can visit his office, or that is, his Facebook page, and you can read reviews of the other customers. Give High Desert Meat Processing a call for your wild game and domestic processing needs, 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats, brats, Polish dogs, hot dogs, much more, kielbasas, summer sausage, salami, pepperoni, and jerky. USDA approved, and Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. The number again, 734-9949. So talking a little bit about what we've got going on right now with uh, <laughs> what we've got going on right now with what's going on in, in Washington, and they claim uh, that they are not going to pursue this matter of vetting refugees who are coming here from war-torn parts of the world. No matter what happens, you know, we've got we've got bodies piled up in Los Angeles now, and if you think about it, in Tennessee and some other places too, because of terrorists who came here as refugees. And yet, despite all of the tough talk and, and everything else you're hearing from a great many people, members of Congress said, yeah, we hear you, sure we hear you, yeah, we do, but don't expect anything right now. Jeb Bush, who won't likely be in the Republican race much longer, he's if you didn't know it, he's running for president. The guy could literally, at this point of his life, go into witness protection. He gets so little coverage and there's so little interest in his campaign. He made an appearance last night on Sean Hannity's program on the Fox News channel. And, well, at one time he was for amnesty, if you recall. He's looking at that 3% he has in the polling uh, right now. And listen to what he has to say about uh, vetting refugees as well as border security. Well, I agree with the pause for Syrian refugees. Absolutely, we should not be allowing people in. The president has the money. The Congress has appropriated the money. We need more border patrol agents. We need to use techno- drone technology. We need to build uh, the, the wall that has, has been designed. We need to get on with it. Say, I've got 3% of the polls. I suddenly got religion. I think it's a great idea. We should stop by these refugees from coming here, though we can figure out who they are. And even though I'd like to open the floodgates and all of my backers who've given me all this campaign cash over here in excess of $100 million would like to eliminate the southern border altogether, 
I need to raise those poll numbers. So, Sean, I'm telling your audience right now that I'm for a wall at the border and I'm for vetting refugees. Oh, at least for now, just like Congress. Right, and if you can trust them, you can trust me. Coming up on 8.30, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I do want to remind you, I have a lot more to talk about this morning, obviously, than just the federal government putting the, uh, I don't want to use a bad word here, the federal government raking you over the coals. How's that? And all of the promises made by Republicans that obviously they never intended to keep. We have other things to talk about this morning. I do want to uh, tell people, you may have noticed it already. So I went away on vacation for two weeks, returned to the office yesterday, noticed that I had a bit of a sinus issue yesterday morning, was sneezing off and on, and then last night uh, trying to sleep. I don't. I didn't get any what they call REM sleep. I was up about every hour just because I was so congested. So yes, after two weeks vacation, and now returning to work, and a week from Christmas, I've come down with a doozy of a cold. So if some of you are inclined, I'll give you a little time to talk on the air this morning, and you can save me a little time, or at least save my voice. Uh, and that'll that be greatly appreciated. If you'd like to give us a shout just after the break, feel free to do so. 736-0300. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX. Just saw a statistic. It's from a poll that was flashed on the monitor here in our studio from Fox News. Four out of five Americans don't trust the government's ability to prevent a lone wolf terrorist attack in this country. We also heard testimony from the FBI that says that the shooters in San Bernardino did not use social media in advance. What were they expecting? Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go in and shoot up my office mates at 11 o'clock. And just thought I'd let you all know. Didn't happen. You know those people in that office, those poor people who died or were wounded or traumatized? They had thrown that couple. Some of you may be aware of this. They had thrown that couple a baby shower just a, several weeks before the shooting took place. And these fiends... You know, went right along with That's called dimitude. It's like you just go along with it and say, oh, thank you very much. We'll take it. Sure. Good to have. What a great friend you are. While the whole time they were planning on going out in a blaze of glory and taking a lot of people with them. 834, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 23. Well, no, strike that. We just bounced back up to 24 this morning. If you have a question or comment today and you'd like to reach the show, Telephone number 736-0300. That's 736-0300. I want to remind you, coming up in a couple of weeks on the program, on December 30th, I'm going to be marking my first anniversary on the air at News Radio 1310 KLIX. Well, it wasn't it wasn't yet my show, but I was sitting in on the show for a few days, and then after the new year, it became mine. That morning, we're going to be joined by Russell Singleton, a physician assistant from Trip Family Medicine. And we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions that normally deal with weight loss and that normally don't work. So he's going to talk that morning about what you might do that could work. And he says he's going to recommend some small changes that could have some big results. But we all often make those New Year's resolutions, and you might as well just make them on February 23rd as far as the value of all of those. 835 now on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310. Dot com. Also, next week, uh, we'll be joining the folks, in fact, on the uh, 23rd from Trip Family Medicine, another program coming up. We do it every Wednesday between 8.30 and 9 o'clock right here on the station. And we do remind you that Trip Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. We have had such an argument about this refugee issue in our own small community for the last eight months. And yet... It was only until Paris, France, and then what happened in San Bernardino that the public really said, whoa, wait a minute, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe, maybe everybody who's bringing this up really isn't a, biggest and a, a bigot and a racist. Maybe all of these dead bodies and blood everywhere signifies something that they might have a point. Do you think? It was also interesting to watch the local political class fall into line, and most of those people who were backing this program suddenly went silent after the governor said he wanted to moratorium on the program. He said it on the program here, and there was nothing for a month. And then after Paris, when he said it again, it was like, hmm, gee, the governor's absolutely right. If he says so, then I better do it. 
They didn't respond to you, the voting public, the taxpaying public, but they did respond to the governor. Well, again, we've been talking this morning about how all disappoint the disappointment we have in a great many people in elective office. Here's a story from the Daily Signal. Tony Blair isn't politically correct when talking about Islam and terrorism. The former British prime minister, not a conservative, by the way, came to the United States this week and gave a speech at the Library of Congress. And he was talking with uh, some of the questioners, and he disagreed with the approach that our own president and our own political class has when it comes to, uh, to refugee resettlement and who we're actually fighting in all of this. Asked by the moderator, the former Ambassador Martin Indyk, why Mr. Blair dares speak about Islamic terrorism and extremism, given that the Obama White House insists that such mentions will alienate all adherents of the religion, Blair simply smiled and said, quote, because that's what it is, unquote. So their former guy has just come over here, and again, he's a member of the, uh, the Labor Party, which is the, the Liberal Party. Uh, frankly, since he left, it's become almost the Communist Party of England. And he says it's exactly what it is. It's Islamic terrorism. And he said, we better do something now about it, or we're going to pay the price down the road. We're going to be very, very sorry. So Mr. Obama, not in attendance and likely wouldn't be listening anyway, here's another quote. We have to explain to our citizens and those coming in why our values and our way of life matter to us and why we will defend them to the last. We must recover our own confidence in our own belief system. Ah, you see, because American liberals don't have that confidence in that belief system. We've been dealing with this for how long? You, you, you stop and you think about it. There's a story today that says Harvard has put out placemats. They're sending their students home with placemats for the holiday. They didn't. I don't know that they said Christmas holiday, but the placemats are designed to show people's political opinions, and what they want their students to do is to go home and have an argument with their families at Christmas dinner about refugee resettlement and tell anyone that's opposed that they're a racist bigot. I kid you not. These people, they, they despise their country, they despise any belief in God, and they despise our traditional ways, and they must be stopped. Look, I'll take some of your telephone calls coming up in just a moment, but we have a hard break. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Stick around, I'll get the calls in just about three minutes. <laughs> 